Go, uh, yeah, we should go. Just, uh, that's, that's close enough. Hi. <coughs> Excuse me. Witch. Excuse me. Witch. I clear my throat and everything. This is not pre-recorded. <coughs> this is live. We are live. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Awesome Hardware. Uh, this is a live show. We talk about technology, and we stream every Tuesday evening at about 5.30 p.m. Pacific time to twitch.tv slash awesomehardware. Welcome to everyone who's watching us live over there on Twitch. We also streamed our YouTube channels. This is the first half of episode number 212. Dang, uh, which is on my channel, Paul's Hardware. Uh, in 45 minutes or so, we'll switch to Cal's half, which is on his channel, Bitwit. Links are in the description once we do that transition. Uh, also, wait, what else? What else? Uh, let's do the store plugs really quick. Sure. If you guys want to help uh, support our channels, check out the stores. We have some holiday discount sales going on right now. If you order more than 50 bucks worth, you get 15% off. Order more than 100 bucks worth, you get 30% off. I have a wide variety of shirts, mugs, pint glasses. Uh, hoodies, bottle openers, it's its all real nice merch. Some new stuff down here as well, a little bit more colorful with some new logos on it. Uh, some nice hoodies going on, and we welcome all of your support and hope you guys enjoy the merch. I also got infant onesies, because I have a daughter now and, and they're cute. Uh, Bitwit.tech slash store for Kyle's store. He also has a sale going on, 50% off orders over 50, 30% off orders over 100. New uh, designs from Kyle, Blue Shirt or Death. His new heatsink logo has been Plastered every which way it can be plastered. That's right. Uh, anything else new going on? Uh, the mouse pads. The mouse pads are all new. Uh, scroll down. Oh, wait, I scrolled. Uh, scroll. The ones with the heat sinks on them. These? Yeah. These are Super clean, minimalistic. There we go. Will match with literally anything. That's how we wanted them designed. We'll so. keep, it'll keep your mouse cool because your mouse now has a heat sink on it. Exactly. That's right, that's Paul. Part keep, of, keeps your wrist cool. Part of the whole thing. Improves FPS as well. That I, I swear by and can guarantee. Good, good. Yep. <laughs> You heard it here that first, won't, apparently. Won't come back to haunt me. All right, we do have a few uh, announcements to run through really quickly here at the start of the show. First off, we just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Cell Processing, who is our regular moderator. He's not moderating today. Uh, his, his mom is having some health issues. I'm not going to go into any details, but uh, we just wanted to send him uh, warm, Thoughts. positive feelings and everything. We really hope his mom uh, recovers soon. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, Crafty's here, and hi Crafty, and thanks for being our moderator today. Hi Crafty. Crafty and Sil were both with us over this past weekend. If you guys didn't join us on Saturday, we did a 12-hour charity live stream. Yeah. Uh, somehow we are still alive. I'm actually, it took me a day or two to kind of recover a little bit, but I'm feeling feeling better today. Yeah. Um, we were raising money for uh, via, through Extra Life for the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, and we just had a little bit of an update for you guys. If you guys are watching live at the end of the 12 hours, which we ended about uh, just before 10 p.m. on Saturday evening, we were at about $21,500. It may be a little bit more than that. Since then, we've had more donations because it's still open. People can still donate. In fact, if you're watching on Twitch, the donate link is down there, uh, so feel free to do so. Uh, but we just wanted to give further shout-outs because we're now at $27,228. Damn! Total raised. That's nuts. Uh, a big part of that is PC Part Picker. Five grand? Coming in late and dropping five grand on us. Oh Holy my gosh. Holy shit. PC Part Picker. Not not only a great place to part out a system and find good prices at Thank varying you guys. retailers, but also very generous with a $5,000 donation, which puts them in the top donor spot. That's awesome. Also, my mom and dad donated $25. Yay, Paul's I mom and dad too. To point that out. Also, uh, we had a fan meetup, oh, damn. and I totally neglected while we were live to take the money that I had gathered at the fan meetup. I just went around and I was like, give me money. Uh, I, I traded them things of value for it, but uh, <laughs> I took all that money and I told them I was going to donate it in the charity live stream, and they, most, they must think that I was just lying to them and trying to scam them, but I did follow up and take that. I, I did 400 bucks on that. Nice. So, uh, yes, thanks to all of you guys who donated. Uh, for those of you who joined us live, it was a it was a really fun event. We had a great time. All yeah. the people who came in and gamed with us and everything, uh, Crafty and Cell were there. Uh, CCM was there. Who else was there? Uh, Spider Fan was there. Uh, Steve Steve stopped by briefly. Mm -hmm. Steve and Brian gave uh, us a call. Gave us a call. Mm -hmm. Did a donation as well. Uh, Linus Li Linus did a donation. Him. Yep. Uh, yeah, Linus donated thirteen thirty-seven. needed elite donation and everything. So it was really cool. Lots of fun. Yeah. So just want to say once again, thanks to all of you guys. Uh, it's a really good cause, and we're I, I, we hopefully we'll do it again next year. Yeah, uh, that, okay. uh, I think that blows past our last year's record. Yes, over, last year twenty-five k. Last year we broke twenty k during the live stream as well, and then we had further donations come in and we broke twenty-five k. Yeah, and now I feel like you know, with stuff still trickling in, we got thirty thousand. 
kind of kind of within reach. I don't want to make any promises because no, we're definitely. not really promoting this that much. Right. But uh, if you guys haven't entered to win one of the systems we're giving away, if you go to the links on those uh, broadcast pages on YouTube, uh, those are still open. Those are open until Thursday, so a couple more days. Uh, one of them, one of those systems is international. Uh, one of the systems was not even put together yet, but Kyle has not put it together, and I think that's where he's going, right? To get to grab that system. Look at that. This rig Ooh. is oh, one a, of the giveaway systems. This is the one that I put together. Define R6, I see. This is a uh, Define S2, actually. Oh, the S2, I'm sorry. Yeah, but still a very capable system. Uh, we've got uh, Ryzen 5 3600X and a GTX 1660 Super from Gigabyte. Nice. 16 gigs of DDR4 and uh, all the storage that you'd need in a very good, reliable, and expandable case that's ready for custom water cooling or any kind of expansion you want to do down the line. Uh, this is one of the, the PCs we are giving away. The only thing you have to do to enter is uh, is, is visit the uh, donation page. Yeah, and you again, don't have to make a donation. Donation's not required. It's not required, but Encourage, if but you're yeah. feeling generous, yeah. feel free to do so for a chance to win the sucker. Uh, not, not everyone has the spare fundage to do donations, and we completely understand and respect that. Wanted to keep it open for everyone, and that also makes things, from our understanding, a little bit legally uh, more kosher. And we don't. Anyway. So we're yep. all good. Yep. Uh, yeah. Thanks again. Uh, a disclaimer for the start of the show that we usually do earlier, but we drink beer. Uh, we occasionally use adult language, so please uh, don't watch if you don't. Uh, if you're not at least tolerant of some of that stuff. Speaking uh, of which, I am currently out of beer. Speaking of the beer, I would like a refill. I could be out of beer too. Courtesy of uh, courtesy of our friend Coalition Gaming. Was it, were these from Coalition? Oh no, wait. Were these from Coalition or were the? Uh, okay, we got at our fan ones. meetup. We had four beers given us to us. Two of them were Finn Dumans, and yes, we already killed one of them. I think it was Coalition who brought the Fiend. Dumans. Okay, I think this was from Coalition Gaming, and then there's one other. Guy, and I feel horrible because I forget his name. He was there two years ago, and then he came again this year. Oh. And his, and his, of all the people, I met so many people that day, and his name, anyway. He, he, he brought us some stuff, It's too, on the tip of my tongue. Place. Yeah. I'm sure we'll But they're both great. Remember Both it, great so. guys, and they've provided the, uh, the libations and for thanks today. thanks to them. Kyle, you want to go ahead and, uh, no. open that? You can, don't point that at me. It's got the, I know it's got the thing on it, but. Just. These glasses have endured all they can, all right? They're, they're one more That's cork true. away from just completely cracking. They've already sustained a, a significant impact. Next time a cork hits these things, the glass of the glasses is shattering into my eyes. And it's going to be even more detrimental than it could have been the first time. Something to look forward to. All right. So, this is how Kyle should have done it. Yeah, but that's not going to make the first page on, uh, that's on true. the Twitch uh, clips of all time. That's true. You got a lot more a lot more notoriety from... That won't become a, a Twitter gif that you can right just automatically eye. pull up. That is true. Although maybe it would. Maybe it so would be. Maybe, maybe that wasn't <laughs> the best choice. There you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, okay. for saving my, my eye just now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> all right. Uh... One last announcement for you guys. We are doing the live stream this week. We'll be back again next week. The following three weeks after that are Christmas, New Year's, CES, and we will not be doing the live show. So Correct. we're going to be uh, gone for about a month or so. Uh, and then we're, we're going we're gonna to let you guys know our plans for January as soon as they're planned. <laughs> okay. I think that's... All right, one, one, last, one last announcement. Did you guys look at this baby rhino? Oh, that's so... Duh. Cool. Is that the music from the... This is, yeah, this is just the music. <laughs> Look at this baby rhino. It's just getting... It's getting all the it's love. It's getting brushed off. I wish someone brushy would, brush would rub me like that. Look at his tail. I'm gonna play that again. I like this pose he does, right? Which one? Everyone one? remember to brush your rhino. That one's cute, but look at look at the, look at that one. Oh yeah. That's the pose. He's really stretching. That's the pose right there. He's doing his, so his morning yoga. Okay. Aww. Anyway. Maybe right now. It's a great way to start the show, I that think. I think it could totally kill you. <laughs> Probably in a heartbeat. Soon it will grow into a... a, a Demonic a, monster. A, yeah, a death machine. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about some tech news. We have Ryzen leaks, or info. Uh, this is a Guru of 3D article by Hilbert, and uh, the information is about Ryzen 4000 series processors and X670 chipsets being scheduled for late 2020. Uh, what a coincidence. The Ryzen 3000 series and X570 chipsets uh, just launched this year. Yep. So uh, looking at what's coming down the pipeline for the next generation, 
Uh, there's some expectations about these. It should be noted. All of this information is via the Chinese website, mydrivers.com, which has posted many rumor uh, articles in the past. Uh, some have been more true than others, so uh, you should treat this as a rumor, not necessarily true, not necessarily direct from the manufacturer. But uh, definitely some excitement about Ryzen 4000 because Ryzen 3000 is... Like, you still can't buy them because the 3950X is sold out everywhere, and um, yeah. But you may have a chance People to get like one, them. to snag one, uh, if you follow along with my half of the show. Oh, really? Maybe talking about uh, an opportunity for you to get your hands on one of these desirable chips. Well, that's exciting. For less than the $900 that Newegg is currently charging? Potentially. That would be nice. Uh, anyway, Ryzen 4000 is still going to slot into AM4 motherboards. That's super nice too. I, I wasn't necessarily expecting there to be another generation of CPUs on this platform. AMD promised that the platform would be viable through 2020, and I feel like if they had wanted to, they could have gotten away with saying, all right, you know, Ryzen 3000 is still the mainstream processor at the beginning of 2020, still, you know, the top of the line of what we're selling, so, you know, goal met, we've, we've achieved our, what we set out to achieve. But according to this article, we are going to be getting new processors for AM4 at some point, as well as a new chipset, X670, uh, and probably late 2020 is the anticipated launch of these. These are going to be, the CPUs at least are going to be based on Zen 3 microarchitecture, which we've discussed a little bit on the show before. Still 7 nanometer, uh, so still the same lithography as uh, current 3000 series processors, but 7 nanometer plus is going to use EUV, or extreme ultravi ultraviolet, ultraviolet technology, as opposed to the Crap, what was the other one before? Crappy ultraviolet technology, I think, was, was is what they're using right now. The CUV. Yeah, the crappy, yeah, exactly. Uh, X670 chipset should have better support for PCIe 4.0, as well as increased connectivity for M.2, SATA, and USB 3.2 drives. No information yet on, like, stuff like PCIe lanes, and if they're, you know, they're going to drop another four PCIe lanes on us or something like that. AMD's in a weird situation, I feel like, right now, because... They have such high-end hardware available on the mainstream platform. If you look at 12-core and 16-core processors, the reason that $750 seems reasonable for a 3950X is because it's, it's going blow for blow with high-end desktop platform uh, yeah. CPUs. Right. High-end desktop platform has other benefits that you may or may not take advantage of, such as more PCIe lanes, more, more, more connectivity. Some people need that, some people don't. So... Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. I like it. I'm down for more performance. But uh, I was thinking earlier today, I was like, if you look at Intel's mainstream, and Intel's got a lot of criticism lately because they haven't really answered back AMD in any real effective way. But a Intel's mainstream platform, the most expensive processor you could get there, pretty much topped out at 500 bucks mm -hmm. with the 9900K and yep. um, the ones leading up to that. Right. AMD now has a $750 processor mm -hmm. on their mainstream platform. Yeah. So just as, as, as computer technology progresses and everything, prices go up. That's natural. But I always find it interesting when these sort of new watermarks are set for mm -hmm. how much you might be spending on a mainstream, plot, pro, mainstream processor. Right. 750 bucks is AMD a lot. AMD is like the, the uh, NVIDIA <clears throat> of the CPU world. Just setting these like benchmark, like record high prices for their flagship parts because they know they can and they're sort of untouchable in that space that'd be a good thing to argue on <clears throat> on, on uh, sword fight but we won't oh no it's <laughs> sorry uh, we're not going no we're I not arguing we're anything. not arguing that on sword fight I'm oh, just, okay, i was just okay. thinking that that would be an interesting argument be a to hot make. take and that's something that you know it's all right so we're not we're not sure how things are going to play out in 2020 i think it's going to be an interesting year because i think this is the time when intel needs to answer back they need to come out they need to launch some products they need to prove that they're still going to be competitive in the mainstream consumer space and everything and if you talk to any of the people who are doing reviews and everything intel platforms are kind of a hard sell right now um because of what amd has done and because of their aggressive pricing and everything like that so yeah I, I, I think it's, I think AMD coming up and being competitive all of a sudden is good. I think a flip-flop would be bad. If suddenly Intel tanks, and I'm not expecting this, Intel's huge, it's going to take a lot to suddenly... Make them irrelevant. Yeah, completely. make them ir irrelevant. Um, but it would suck if suddenly just Intel sucks and now AMD's good and now you got to pay, you know, all the super high-end money for all the AMD stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, 
We'll see how, how it goes, though. We'll... We still want competition. Yes. Yeah. I would be, like, I would be happy for Intel to answer back with a well-performing, reasonably priced product that I could recommend. Because then we all win. Yeah, I, Consumers like I'm, win. I'm, I would be very happy if they if they do that. I kind of want that now. It's it's um, almost coming to the point where like I'm a little scared with how much steam AMD's building mm -hmm. because because there's the potential of a role reversal that no one really saw coming and no one you know uh, was confident would happen. And now that it is, it's like well, it doesn't really matter if it's AMD or Intel on top. If there's someone that's so far ahead, it's uh it's it's going to limit consumer options. Um, and then we could just fall into the exact same formula that we were in before, but with just different variables at play. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that, that would be bad, too. So, uh, you know, it'll be an interesting year. We will continue to cover it as best we can. And uh, just a few more little details from the article about some of the rumors. X670 chipset uh, for the motherboards that it is uh, that have it will have better support for PCIe Gen 4. Increased connectivity for M.2, SATA, and USB 3.2. Uh, the CPU should have more transistors thanks to that EUV, techno EUV lithography uh, and 7 nanometer plus. Uh, performance increase should also be helped via increased power per clock cycle and higher clock rates. And um, these, again, are probably going to be the very last AM4 chips available because what we're looking at there is, is some, some more fundamental platform changes because we're probably going to be transitioning tra transitioning to PCIe 5.0 and DDR5 in uh, 2021 or early 2022. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, Sexy. I'm curious. I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, moving on. You guys may have heard about a exciting new high-end, high-performance computer that launched today. I'm sure a lot of you have probably already pre-ordered this. <laughs> oh, here. yeah. Uh, the new Mac Pro. A reasonable is prospect. now available as of today. The Mac Pro. Mm -hmm. This is the product from Apple that most directly competes with the type of stuff that we deal with, which are desktop computers. Yeah. We're not talking about the uh, trade-offs of wedging a bunch of high-end hardware into a super thin and light MacBook or something like that. We're not talking about uh, iPhones and the integration there, or the overall platform. No, we're talking about a desktop computer. It's meant to do heavy lifting. Uh, $53,000, so 52599 is the most expensive. Kit out the Mac Pro, Mac Pro with the highest end options for everything, and it's $52,600 <laughs> uh, before tax. What is that? What does that get you? Like Be bearing in mind that like board? almost half of that price is memory, is memory. So so <laughs> you can get a Mac Pro for six thousand. Six thousand. That's the starting price. And as I mentioned the term the six thousand, and you're like and in your mind you're like, well six thousand compared to fifty two thousand whatever how cheap seems very reasonable. Right. Six thousand Dollars is way up. more than any of you spend on your desktop computer. Even high performance users, even high even end high end desktop platform users. So here is where four maybe a, at the a, most. A term that I want to keep bringing up and reiterating over and over again is anchoring, anchoring, anchoring. Fifty three thousand dollars is not a price that Apple expects a lot of people to 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 buy. I don't think I, I'm sure there's some whales out there who have already ordered this and everything. By the way, not even shipping until January. So that that kind of sucks. Well, I mean, that's only a month away, but still. Uh, anchoring. Anchoring is a term which is basically, it's, it's a psychological term. Anchoring is what NVIDIA did with the original Titan, selling it for $1,000 and telling people, it's not a gaming graphics card. And now five years later, however many years later, we have $1,000 plus graphics cards. This is an anchor for a high-end Mac Pro desktop computer. So people look at that and they're like fifty-three thousand dollars, and then they look at the six thousand dollar one and they're like, well, it's only six thousand. Yeah. Because you've already set the anchor at the fifty-three thousand dollar price, and now people are using that as a point of comparison. Right. It is not illegal. It's. I don't want to say it's bad or like evil or anything like that. I think it's somewhat manipulative. But it is a technique that many manufacturers use, and often they use in sort of a long-term... They, they have a long-term plan, guaranteed. Guaranteed there's a long-term plan when it comes to pricing for stuff like this. Yeah. 
and not just with Apple, but with lots of other re- uh, lots of other manufacturers. And I already used the Nvidia example. And, and every a, industry. I mean, I can. There. I mean, literally, literally every industry applies to this because you go to the movie theater to buy some popcorn. You've got your small, medium, and large, and your your yep. your, your large option is like fifteen dollars, but then the small is like eight dollars, and you're like, oh, eight dollars? That's pretty cheap, actually. Exactly. You're still paying eight fucking dollars for a little <laughs> carton of fucking popcorn. It's just all psychological games. This is just like you know decades and decades of a bunch of dudes sitting in a room just doing research on how people think and psychoanalyzing society as a whole and being like, all right, what's the most uh, uh, lucrative way to to market this? This is exactly what Apple's doing. So yeah, Um, any of you guys who are looking at this and like, oh my gosh, LOL, ridiculously expensive computer, no one's going to buy that. Just know that I don't think necessarily Apple is looking at this and being like, we're going to sell a bunch of these at $50,000 plus. But... The anchoring is there, and the people who are buying the, the bulk of the products uh, might now be willing to spend a little bit more if, if this psychological technique is effective at all. But um, how do you get from $7,000, the base price, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, $6,000, the base price, up to $53,000, it is via add-ons, <laughs> upgrades, That's and other insane. stuff like that. Um, it's all detailed in an article, which is on Engadget, which is linked in the description along with all the other articles for today. Of course, you start out with a base model for the Mac Pro, and then you can customize it. You can add on extra stuff. Uh, so the $53,000 version includes the best Intel processor currently available. And high-end, not, not even mainstream or anything like that, we're talking server processor, the Intel Xeon W28 core, which runs at 2.5 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. If you run it with a with a liquid chiller in front of a bunch of people at Computex, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a seven thousand dollar upgrade for the twenty eight core Intel Xeon W. Kyle, would you mind looking up the Intel Xeon W? Yeah, a, a twenty eight core and just seeing what it sells for retail, because that's this is where I feel like I my point of argument would be if someone was like, hey, I'm about to buy this Apple system, what do you think of it? I would look at the hardware and be like, the price. $3,200. The $3, price $3, increases, the, the the markups that Apple charges for stuff mm-hmm. compared to just the retail prices you pay it's astronomical. are absurd. $3,300 is what you could just buy a Xeon W28 core yeah. for out of the box. Apple's charging more than double for that, $7,000. Four terabytes of storage is $1,400. <laughs> That's for a single four terabyte drive. Doesn't a four terabyte drive go for like three hundred bucks or something? I, w- I bought a couple two terabyte drives for one hundred and eighty bucks each over Black Friday, so that's like three hundred and sixty dollars as a, as compared to fourteen hundred. That's over a thousand dollars more. Granted, they're t- probably talking like a higher end NVMe drive or something. I'm like sorry, that. I correct my statement. Two hundred dollars for a four terabyte. That's mechanical. WD Black. That's mechanical. Oh, 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 sorry, you said SSD. We're probably talking SSD. We're probably talking high end SSD oh, okay. as I, well. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. But still, you can. Uh, how much for a four terabyte? Four terabyte. Still five hundred and seventy nine dollars. Look at NVMe. What's how much for the same for the NVMe? Six hundred and fifty bucks. All right, so they're still charging probably double uh, what you pay for retail it's for either that. Either double or triple that they're charging. The highest end graphics option you can include is two Radeon Pro Vega two Duo cards, which have thirty two gigs of RAM in each card. Those are nice. Ten thousand eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Market for that. <laughs> no. Radeon Pro. Stop it. Radeon Pro Vega Stop 2 it. Duo. Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo. Uh, you're just getting Radeon 7s there, which. Uh, oh, sorry. It's got to be the Pro. 2 Pro Duo. Well, Those I mean, are it might not even be available for sale right there. But anyway, $10,800 for that markup. How much is that? Uh, but again, the big. Upsell for this system is upgrading yourself to 1.5 terabytes of RAM, which is impressive. 1.5 terabytes? 1.5 terabytes of RAM means that you're maxing out the six-way memory uh, configuration on the Xeon W with 12 128-gig chips of DDR4 EEC memory. That's a lot. Which is a lot. And how much does that cost? $25,000. Okay. (laughs) So, so like, a really good economy car. Yeah. You could buy a whole fucking car for some for RAM. That, for that much RAM. From uh, Apple. Other add-ons like Apple's Afterburner PCIe Accelerator is $2,000. Add wheels to the case, four hundo. Wheels. $400 for wheels. Wheels. On the case. Wheels. That's that's really? right up that's right really up there Apple? with the one thousand dollars you have to pay for the stand for the XDR display, which isn't included in the five thousand fifty 
two thousand whatever. This is this price. is like this is like buying a, a luxury uh, car, like doing a yeah. build out for a luxury car or something like that. It's like oh, you want like the cool like floodlights, you know that uh, you know that open up with the the car door, or you want like the cushiony seats. That's going to be an additional package price of like mm -hmm. eight grand or whatever it is. This is like they're selling it like a Porsche or Pretty something much. like that. It's it's nuts, yeah. and it's crazy to me that some people. Actually, probably a lot of people will still buy this for some reason as opposed to just building it themselves for literally a fraction of the price. And that's where it comes down to, to like it, the know. alternative. And if we were talking about a uh, something other than Apple, because, you know, I, 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 I for one understand and appreciate some of the things that Apple users tout as the reasons they might use that platform. And there is something to be said for the sort of restrictive way that Apple handles how their operating system can be used. It allows them to be more flexible, um, and it allows them to basically keep uh, hardware configurators from using their operating system if they don't want to. In order to create an, an Apple-based system, you have to create the, the Hackintosh. It's not necessarily as easy as you know grabbing your Windows and, and installing it. Sure. Apple doesn't necessarily want you to build your own system and install their Apple OS onto it. That's, that's like the that's antithesis all, of their their mantra. And that's what's always kept me away from it. So right. you can easily do something like taking all of the hardware in this, parting it all out, and being like, here's the same system. And it would still even be like a ridiculous 20 grand or something like that yeah. if you're just looking at the hardware cost. I don't think it's worth the upsell for the ecosystem and everything. Uh, based on the prices. Um, but if you're trying to say, well, just buy the hardware outright, there is a little bit more to that story because you have to include stuff like the software integration and what Apple does there. That yeah. said, that said, I don't know if I can pull this up in time. That said, no. That said, uh, no. there have been Stop. some reviews out on this, and I, I I don't have it ready right here. Probably from like the top five or seven like you tech YouTubers that yeah that probably got you know which yeah let's see John received the sample probably free of cost yeah John tweets which a lot. I'm not saying we don't receive some amazing samples of tech yes we do uh you know free of charge but. I'm curious to know what configuration they were sent. All right, so here's here's so and and again, this is very anecdotal. So please don't quote me or anything. I'm just trying to point out some of the stuff that's come out uh, from the get-go. Here's uh, Jonathan Morrison, TLD Today's tweets uh, advertising his video that he did on the Mac Pro. Uh, he's apparently pretty. He's excited about it and whatever, and that's cool. I like John's videos. To be clear, I think he does a great job. They look amazing, and I think he does a great job explaining the technology. And I don't want this to be about, like, ew, he uses Mac, so therefore he sucks or anything. But, as pointed out by Harbor Connects, check the performance setting. His 28-core CPU was under 10K in Cinebench R20, and he was curious whether it was throttling or in a lower performance mode. I just want to point out that this system out of the box, if you're buying from Apple, and you're trying to get something that is like, well, it just works, and, you know, they've put the effort in, and I'm paying this much money for it or whatever. Right. Uh, it should be getting a more reasonable score on Cinebench R20 than uh, what they're hitting with it out of the box. So, sure. Anyway, a 3900X hits hits close to 8,000. So, 3900X. Yes, and that's 500 yeah. bucks as compared to, I guess, 7,000 if you're buying from Apple or 3,300 if you're right. buying if you're just buying the CPU outright. Anyway, that's about all we can say about this for right now. Uh, apples are still really expensive. And you know what? But it, all right, if I if I'm gonna, yeah. Actually, I just pulled up my own benchmarks. Actually, your benchmarks because you benchmarked the 10980XE. That's true. For the recent video that we did, which hit a score of uh, Cinebench R20 score of 10,160. That is. And that's an 18 core processor. That is slightly overclocked. Slightly yeah. overclocked with with MCE, but even without MCE, you were still hitting just under 9K. Yeah. Just under 9K with that. So. I mean, I think there's, Hardware Connects definitely has some has some truth there. That, and there uh, might be other issues there, like I don't know how Cinebench R20 runs on, 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 on or iOS or anything like that. But anyway, sure. uh, that seems really well. If I can offer, like, if I can, if I can step back from everything I've said so far about this, 
There's probably somebody who's going to spend, say, twenty to 30000 on some configuration of this, and they're going to get the system, and it's going to be the best computer they've ever used, and they're going to use it for years, and they're going to make, make a bunch of money out of it from it, from the content they make, and it's going to be a great experience. Yeah. That's probably going to happen. Right. So for all the criticism that we might put out there, uh, for someone who's already using this platform, who's already, already using software based on this platform, who's already using something like Final Cut Pro, which is a software that I'm often jealous of because of the way it takes advantage of quits, quick sync when sure. it's available. Uh, you know, so the, 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 all that said, we can level, we, we can put out all the criticisms we want about what people use and how much they pay for it or whatever. At the end of the day, if somebody is going to be, I don't know, is it, uh, man, his videos look so clean. It must be his $20,000 camera. <laughs> it's got to be the red camera. <laughs> it's more like than that. my house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marquez MKBHD also has a video on it, unboxing impressions. Chances are you've already seen it. Yeah. Uh, shows some of the internals and stuff like that. Hey, is that... It's a clean looking layout. Is that uh, two SATA ports there? That's, that, that looks like SATA. Straight goals. Two <laughs> Just upgrade, upgrade your SSD <laughs> right there. Plug it in. Okay. Oh, boy. I, 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 don't, I don't think I have anything further to add to that. No. Uh, all right, let's much. move on. Okay. Uh, I already talked about that. I already talked about that. Seagate. Hard drives. You guys excited about hard drives? Oh, no. Spinning, spinning mechanical hard drives? I am not. All right, in that case, we'll go through this quickly. Seagate has an enhanced hard drive technology with their new Exos 2X14 hard drive, which is leveraging... Uh, their new Mach.2, I don't know why it's Mach.2, but whatever, uh, multi-actuator technology is basically what they're talking about here. So the actuator on a hard drive, is, or, the, or the arm is basically, these little arms that go out, uh, they have the read-write heads on the end of them, they go out over the disc in order to access the data as the disc is spinning around. Okay. Um, this is part of what causes mechanical hard drives to be slower, because there is a physical process that happens in order to seek the data out off of the spinning rust disk. Uh, that's why SSDs are so much faster in terms of response time and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There is a solution for hard drives that has promised to enhance the IOPS performance uh, by significantly, actually about double, which isn't nothing to be sneezed at when it comes to hard drives, the amount of them, the amount of storage that's available on them. But you can kind of see here, basically you got one set of actuators that's on one, uh, arm and then you've got oh, a so couple just double fisting. Yeah, so it's got two that can go out there It's got two arms instead oh, okay. of one to reach out there and read the data off the drive uh, Why this, not both? this technology was actually announced a couple years ago. It's taken a while for them to actually implement it um, But probably mostly useful and interesting for anyone who's more working in a data center data center environment mm -hmm. um, If you're talking about home computing and you're talking about IOPS doubling on a mechanical drive, you're talking about them going from 800 to 1600 or something like that. It still I, isn't that And that's, crazy that's, that's a ballpark. They, they're maybe a little bit higher than that. Um, but compare that to SSDs that can get up to the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but latency on hard drives is, is, is really what is holding them back. It's why when you install an operating system onto an SSD and you load your operating system, suddenly everything's fast and you click on something and it's responsive. On a hard drive, you might click and you might have to wait for a little seek time. Uh, even worse, if the hard drive's asleep or something like that, right. uh, it, it might take even longer. So uh, half of these drives recording heads will operate together as a unit, the other half operate independently, uh, which should be very beneficial to applications such as content delivery networks, Video streaming, mail servers, backup and shuttle surfaces. Uh, backup and shuttle services. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm forgetting the way how to talk. The fiend of Mondes. Hadoop. Taking hold. Hadoop, which I learned. Hadoop. Right <laughs> Hadoop, named after an elephant. And <laughs> cloud applications. Uh, and is being tested for data center deployment now. So for all of you guys who are like, this is, I don't care about this, you're probably right. You're building a gaming PC at home and it doesn't matter. But for any of you guys who work in a data center environment, suddenly doubling the IOPS of your hard drives might actually be a big deal. For example, something that data centers do, which I was completely unaware of, is uh, something called stranded capacity. Because hard drives can take longer to access the data on drives, some data centers apparently have, I guess on a software level, it's set up so the drives just don't fill up all the way. And that way, 
uh, you can be accessing data off of two four terabyte drives rather than one drive together. Hmm. So yeah, it, it's splitting up the data in order to spread it out more so you can access more drives in parallel and, and at the same time in order to reduce overhead. I see. From my understanding. So it sacrifices some capacity. It sacrifices capacity in order to spread the data out over different drives in an array, presumably, and um, so stranded capacity is what you end up with. Um, so this is saying you could take one of these drives and basically tell the server it's two drives, and it'll access it like it's two drives, but it'll have the performance of two drives yeah. because of the dual read write heads. So that, that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, striking Seagate's almost. also working closely with Microsoft and collaboration with this, the main goal being to leverage the technology to maintain the apps required for some of Microsoft's cloud services, including Azure and the Microsoft Exchange online email service. Cool. Good stuff. Cool. All right. Uh, one more little news story here to talk about. We had a chance to play uh, Halo over uh, during, during the charity live stream. It was fun. It was. I like barely played Halo before, um, which is so it was kind of cool. It was cool a lot of fun as like an introductory experience, and it was it was easy to grasp. We could jump in there. We, yeah. we tried some different game modes and stuff like that. It's like CS:GO kind of. But a lot of people playing it uh, on PC, especially, and especially if you're comparing it to, say, you know, a lot of modern titles that use modern techniques, we're kind of like I don't know. It doesn't look as as good. As it could, mm -hmm. and there is, a, a, I guess, an anisotropic filtering setting that you can go into the menu and, and boost up to 16x instead of 8x, which does improve things a little bit. But um, this is something different. Uh, a YouTuber, Digital Dreams, and this is linked in the article, which is linked in the description, has used ray tracing in order to enhance the look of Halo. Uh, oh wow! And you can see he's got RT on and RT off. He's going back and forth. So look how dull it looks there, and then he turns it on, and suddenly everything's lit up. Looks nice. Yeah. So I like this because I think it's a good example. Oh, look, he even does the, the cross. Good job, Digital Dreams. Well played. Well done with this video. Why are there so many dislikes? I like the comparison. I don't know, because people are like, it's Xbox, it sucks, or something <laughs> like that. I, I'm, I'm not sure. So you can see uh, you're, getting, you're getting light bounce off of uh, surfaces and stuff like that. And it's really taking a game that looks pretty dated when it comes to the graphics. It did launch in 2010 on Xbox. And suddenly making it look a lot better, at least a lot more realistic lighting. So, um, well, now I regret our entire live stream. Yeah, for charity. Well, like, when we could have been gaming we could have had with our, this, ray, we could have, could have had the ray tracing, ray tracing on. So I mean, you talk about RTX off and RTX on and stuff like that, and I all the I stuck that all in. the criticism that was kind of levied at Nvidia for pushing this so much, but. When it comes to the more most effective uses of ray tracing, I feel like what I've seen recently has been using it in old games. <laughs> old games that are relatively yeah. easy to run on Minecraft. modern hardware, Minecraft where the huge. overhead of adding ray tracing suddenly <clears throat> makes the it's game look a lot better and it, you know we can actually process using a modern graphics card or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Minecraft is one of them, uh, Quake, Quake 2? Wait, was it Quake 2? Quake 2, yeah. yeah Quake 2 with the ray tracing mod. Uh, that was really cool, too. So, anyway, if any of you guys are playing a lot of Halo and you want to dabble in this, it is available. Uh, you have to use Reshade and a specific uh, mod of that via Pascal Gilcher's Ray Tracing Shader. Um, and then you can you can add that. You do need to go to Pascal Gilcher's uh, Patreon page and subscribe to the beta tier of his Patreon, which costs $5 in order to access this. Hmm. Which I'm okay with. He worked on it. He did coding. Five bucks. That's Beautiful. not bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, moving on. Uh, next segment, last segment, is not Ojoy. It's Swordfight. I need to update that. Where's Swordfight? All right, Sword. things are about to get uh, controversial All right. as we cover some hot topics here. Swordfight, the classic segment where Kyle and I argue about things. Love uh, all right, so today on Sword Fight, we will be arguing about iPhones. Here we go. iPhones, okay. Oh, yeah, and of course, uh, you guys get to also weigh in as well with the straw poll link. Uh, so we'll be we'll be sharing that briefly. The question is no or hell no? Nor. No, that's not what it is. No or hell no. <laughs> Either way works. Okay. I'm, sure uh, I'm pasting a straw poll in the chat so you guys can vote on that. Uh, but you shouldn't vote yet. Wait until you hear our arguments about this. So iPhone, right? Yep. Uh, has a new model coming out in 2021, and rumor has it they will not be having any ports. 
No ports. No ports on the iPhone. They already removed the headphone jack. They are now going to remove the lightning charger or cable or whatever. So really, they're just removing there. one port. Yes. Which is the only remaining removing one. removing the only port that they had on there. Which would mean um, wireless a lot charging of, only. A lot of people had been uh, wanting Apple to adopt USB-C because, you know, universal standards are pretty convenient for people. Apple's like, no, we don't want to pay those licensing fees or whatever. We're just going to remove the port entirely. So the idea here is that everything you do with your phone that might have previously required cables is now done wirelessly. If you want headphones, you got Bluetooth for that. If you want to charge your phone, you got wireless charging. The uh, little Qi charging or the little slot, you drop it on and then it says the wireless charging. Uh, so we're going to argue about this. We're going to say whether this is a good idea or hmm. a bad idea. Hmm. So that way we can have it decided and uh, for and then we'll tell Apple and they'll, they'll have to do whatever we say. That's, that's my expectation. Uh, the straw poll that you guys are voting on is right here. They're rumored to be developing an iPhone with no ports, no charging, no headphone jack, wireless only. Is it a good idea? What do you think, okay. Kyle? All right. Yes, um, good idea. No, bad idea. I'm going to probably play, I'm going to play the unpopular opinion and say, yes, it's good that they're going this route. Um, and here's why, Paul. I think that it's good when companies take risks of this nature. Even, even perhaps before they might be ready or before the technology might be ready for society to accept. Uh, the reason being is because it sort of catapults certain uh, strands of, of technology in order to more quickly refine them and to make them ready for a mainstream audience. So I don't have any plans to buy an iPhone anytime soon. I'm an Android user, have been for pretty much always since smartphones, since I had a smartphone. Um, and so I don't really care how badly this tanks. And this is a, a, definitely a selfish argument point here. But, uh, you know, if, if they come out with this iPhone and it sucks and everyone's like, ah, oh, the, the no port thing sucks, I'm not affected in any way. In fact, I am affected, but only in a positive way because I potentially benefit from other companies as well as Apple themselves improving upon this idea of a portless device. Uh, that eventually one day this technology may be refined to the point where I can actually see myself owning a device with zero ports, a device that I actually want to own, not an iPhone, but maybe this comes to Android once Apple's ironed out all the kinks for us. And at that point, I can benefit from all of the, the great conveniences that, uh, that it offers me, not having to you know, uh, fish around for a cable every night before I go to bed to plug in my phone or trying to scramble in the car for, a, you know, a cable to uh, to charge it up on my way to point B. So I, while I feel like it's probably premature and, and going to have a lot of drawbacks because it's the first of its kind, it's a 1.0 version of, of itself, I think that eventually it, it is more or less the only way that we can move forward with potentially eliminating cables from... Uh, you know, the most commonly used device in the world, which I'm all for. Okay. I'll be honest, I had an argument lined up, and then I read some chat, and I thought of a new argument that's more fun. So FizzGG and uh, quite a few other people are my inspiration for this. But Kyle, obviously you're wrong. Uh, no, they should not be doing a phone with no ports, no headphone jack, no ports at all. I miss the headphone jack. I, I want it back, even though I don't have an, an iPhone. Even though my phone still has a headphone jack, I can imagine if it didn't and how inconvenient that would be uh, at various times and everything. I don't want to use a dongle. But with this, you don't even have the option to use a dongle. All you can use is Bluetooth headphones. What if your headphones aren't charged? What if, what if, what if you don't have a Qi charger? What am I going to be doing? How am I going to, if my phone is almost dead, right? Happens fair, fairly regularly. And I want to still use it. Right now, I can plug in a little battery bank and awkwardly hold them both together and I can still use my phone. Is that what's going to happen? We're going to have battery banks with Qi charging spots on them? Yes, they probably already exist. That's <laughs> fine. It's a, bad, it's a bad example. That's good. But that's good because I'm going with the what, what Chad is saying, which is what's next, right? They took away the headphone jack. A bunch of phones copied it and take, took away the headphone jack there. They're going to take away the charging port. 
Next, they're gonna take the screen away. We're gonna have a phone with no battery. <laughs> no screen. We're gonna, we're gonna have. A... We're gonna go back to beepers and yes. pagers. Next, <laughs> that's, be that's, a... that's what's that's what's happening next. <laughs> it's come full circle. Pretty soon, Apple's gonna we're be gonna have a beeper. Every, Apple's gonna be like, look, everyone, the brand new iPhone. <laughs> Pay us eight hundred dollars, and you can have this iPhone right here. <laughs> it has all the latest technology. It's the iPhone Air. That's what they're going to call it, the Air. iPhone Air. They already have the Air. And people are going to buy it. People are going to spend ridiculous amounts of money on it. Probably two grand is what they're going to charge <laughs> for that. That's my expectation. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I understand some of the reasoning behind this waterproof and all that kind of thing. But I think, I think you're biased because you have a... Uh, forgive me for revealing this to everyone. Something of a bad habit of destroying the phones. And <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, you I've only broken one phone in the last like four years, and that was just a, a small crack. Wifey sauce is really the one who's maybe, broken two phones in the last year. Maybe I'm combining my memories of your broken broken phones with my old roommate Chad's. <laughs> well, that's weird, not fair. You're right. It's not fair. Remember that one time you were in prison? Oh no, that was my ex roommate. But that still applies to you. I'm going to judge you though on, on, those, on that premise <laughs> anyway. I was trying to to. To recant and step back a little bit from what I'm saying. But no. Obviously, this is just pandering to people who can't control their phones, who throw them in, in rivers and lakes and stuff like that. Um, but anyway. I I like a phone with a with a with a headphone jack, and I'm pissed that so many phones have followed Apple's lead and removed the headphone jack. So I don't think this is a good trend in my opinion, because I don't want to see the loss of of like a simple USB plug to charge your phone. Um, you know, put some rubber plugs over it or something like that if you really need to waterproof. Anyway, all right, let's see what you guys think. Right. Uh, I should use the other mouse that controls this computer. Results? No! All right, see, everyone ports agrees. Ports are good. Everyone agrees ports are good. Quite a few people want an Android phone that's all ports. Just no... <laughs> just so... <laughs> just, like, oh, you pull out your phone... <laughs> It's got 30 cables someone's hanging like, out hey. of it. Someone's like, hey, can you play back that video? It's like, no, but I can charge and plug in. <laughs> I can blindfold it, just <laughs> close your eyes. Plug in your There's phone. just 20 USB-C ports around it. Exactly. Not only, is it rever <laughs> not, only, not only is the connector reversible, you can plug it in on any side of the, of think, the phone. Think how much external storage you could plug in. <laughs> no more fishing yeah, around in the dark. Great. All right, uh, we got one more sword fight argument here to do. This one's slightly more seasonal, I guess. Um, so I'll let you guys weigh in on this one as well. Not necessarily tech-related, but uh, we, we wanted to get your opinions, and we wanted to argue about this. Eggnog, right? It's holiday yeah. season. Eggnog. Uh, we got Christmas coming up soon. Uh, happy holidays to all you guys out there, whether you celebrate Christmas or otherwise. But eggnog, right? Every year yeah. you're presented with the eggnog, and every year it's sort of a an existential question to me about whether or not to, mm. to go for the eggnog. Yep. I, I'll be honest, I still have not, I still don't have a fully formed opinion on this uh, question right here. Really? So, um... You don't lean any one way or the other? Eggnog, yes or no. I mean, have you tried eggnog before? Yes, I have. What I was have, your initial right? reaction? I guess I should say yes. Alright, so I do have, like, kind of a bit of a nostalgic feel for eggnog but for me mm -hmm. the nostalgia is eggnog and it's like half eggnog and half milk you gotta you gotta milk mm. it down a little bit and you warm it up and I it's thought not... it already had egg milk in it no it does it's I very dairy probably... it's very dairy okay but you mean diluted but... a little bit even further with uh with yeah the, some milk is yeah yeah preference. yeah it makes the eggnog and the milk and then it makes it uh it makes it yummy and then you warm that up and you have that before you go to bed my experience is not with the alcoholic version of eggnog although mm. i have tried that mm. as i've gotten older Right. And that adds a whole new wh uh, whimsical element to the whole thing. So right. I guess I have to say yes, yes. Sure. Eggnog, yes. Delicious, nostalgic, chock full of uh, nutrients and everything. There's eggs in it. Basically, eggs. it's like a whole meal. You got your protein, you got your dairy. Um, Eggnog and, is basically Soylent. And there's, yeah, and there's... there's um, Soylent just ha is just a bunch of eggs. There's usually some, some, some spices in there or like some uh, nutmeg or something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Yeah, it's, it's like a spicy milk. Yeah, so spicy so egg milk. Everyone should drink eggnog because you probably you're probably very much like me and had eggnog when you were younger, so you've got that nostalgic feel for it. And now you know you're old enough to drink. You can behave responsibly with a drink or two in you at the holiday time. 
and uh, you know, Christmas dinner can get a little bit uh, boring, you know, with all the family there sure. and your uncle's off rambling about something. Right. Eggnog. Touching the kids. Makes the time pass more quickly. Right. I don't know. You should report your uncle, by the way. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 down for some eggnog. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say. Well, you know what, Paul, you're wrong, obviously, because uh, there's a reason why people put started putting alcohol in eggnog. It's because eggnog by itself sucks. That's the only reason you'd put alcohol in anything. Uh, you know, or 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 you know, you're you're in a situation. Obviously, like you said, the holidays. There's a lot of pressure. Um, Did you see Crafty's suggestion? Eggnog in Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Lucky Charms and Captain Crunch? Whoa. Whoa, where did Whoa, it go? Whoa, Crafty. Ca Captain Crunch is amazing, life-changing. That is... Maybe I'll give that a shot. Maybe that's what I've been missing out on my whole life, and that's why I don't feel whole or complete. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think eggnog by itself is atrocious, and it's, uh, it's something that, you know, like... like Need, it needs something a little a little special. It definitely requires a bit of juice uh, in order to make it acceptable, um, because it's egg it's egg juice. It's essentially spiced egg juice. And if if you advertised it and tried to sell it to someone for what it was and said and said, hey, would would you like some spiced juiced up egg juice? They'd probably say no because that sounds horrible. Because it is. Uh, but if you said, but we put like, but we put like two gallons of but rum. It's got booze in. But if you say, but if you say we got, we put booze in the shit, then uh, all right. Well, you know, I, I do have that creepy uncle that's uh, I'm supposed to see in a little bit. So opinions change. Screw it. You know, I'll, I'll flex my morals a little bit on eggnog. But uh, fair enough. Let's see what you guys thought. All right. Feedback on the eggnog. Uh, very important. People like it. People wow, say yes. Really. So only a little less than a quarter of people who have tried eggnog don't like it. So, um, so there you go, about two-thirds. And I guess about, well, I'm sorry, about one-third have never actually even tried it at all. Wow. So there you go. What Jeez. I was thinking of as we were discussing this, I was like, wait, eggnog, but then there's something else. There's another holiday drink that I that my mom makes all the time. Really? Wassel. What the hell's wassel? You ever have wassel? Wassel. No, I've never yeah. even heard of wassel. it. Wassel. Slow it's a, cider it's, it's cider, and there's like a sprig of cinnamon in it. Cinnamon cider. And my mom makes it, and then I drink it, and I'm kind of like torn because it's it's kind of sp it's got some spiciness in there, and not like spicy spicy. Like the it's, cinnamon. It's like cinnamon spicy. Yeah. So it's like a sweet a, sweet tea. Type yeah, of and it's cider? like you you make it in a crock, like pot. crock pot or something. <laughs> it's the kinda, fuck? I know it's kind of weird. <laughs> But that's then you on. try it and it's like warm and anyone? Yeah, here we come a wassailing, right? Holy shit. So, right, have you ever. Here we come a wassailing. There's have you ever heard the song, song Here it? We Come a Caroling, right? Yeah, here yeah, we yeah. Come a caroling. All right, here we come. They say, so, Here we come. There's a version. There's, what is this, the, like the dubstep remix? Here we come a wassailing. Here, oh, I, How dare I they butcher a, a holiday classic? There it is. A holiday classic. Here we come a wassailing among the leaves so green. Here we come a wandering so fairly to be seen. So before it was here we come a caroling, it was it a was wassailing. Really? And I don't know why. It, wow, this is a long ass song. Jeez. Let's, let's, should we play it? Sure. No, we'll get flagged. <laughs> yeah, let's play here we come Completely. a wassailing here in, in the YouTube videos. So what does that mean? I'm coming a wassailing. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm gonna come a wassailing to your house later. Does that mean you show up while was like drinking wassail? <laughs> like, what does that even fucking mean? Here we I, come a wassailing. I'm not. How I, is that? Like, what if you tweeted, "I'm I'm I'm wassailing right now"? <laughs> I mean, you might as well say I'm twerking or any other stupid adverb or verb that. Uh, hot toddy. Hot toddy is also delicious. Okay, we're talking about drinks in this range. So the impression I've gotten is here we come a wassailing, it's right? They're going around singing Christmas carols. They're yeah. singing Christmas carols. They come up to yeah. your house, sing sure. the Christmas carols. Okay. In order to thank the carolers for coming in singing for you, then you present them with wassail, warms them up. It's a nice warm drink. They move on to the next house. Okay. So the that's, carols are caroling, and, and the, the carolees who are being caroled too are the ones wassailing. That's the impression I've gotten. But um, Okay. So this I, is like a response to the carolers. 
The wassle yeah, the wassling yeah. is a response to the carolers. Or like, if the carolers oh, we're sing, reciprocating. if the carol, if the carolers sing, "Here we come a wassling," then obviously they're demanding wassling. Like, <laughs> you better bring us some wassle. We're singing the freaking song right now. <laughs> Here we um, come a threatening a wassling. Okay. Anyway. Wow, I'm, I've learned so much about you know. I, I wanted to I wanted to mix it up show. for the end of this my half of the show, so I feel like I've done that. You you wasp right. me. All right, guys, that's all for my half. We're gonna switch to Kyle's half. If you're on Switch, stay where you're at. Don't go anywhere. If you're on YouTube, the link to Kyle's half is down in the description. Uh, big thanks to all you guys who have watched and hit the thumbs up button and, and all that good stuff. Uh, also, your everyday tech has still consistently been doing timestamps for us. And we're very appreciative of that. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we'll be right back. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. And thank you for wassling. <laughs>